very much. Um, Thank you very I much. think first um, is just for me, it's, it's, it's really a call, call to action. Really a call oh, sorry. Action. My name is oh, Jimmy So. I am uh, one, of am one of the goalkeeper accelerators on the Civics program. I'm really working on SDG 126 through storytelling. And I'm really, the first thing for me, coming from Botswana, is really a call to action in terms of having UNDP cascade down to the country office and having this discussion. Because I think they're very critical and important with multiple stakeholders. And then secondly, it's just an acknowledging the fact that um, the fact that in a lot of these um, instances, in there has been a success instances, story. A success and, in story. and in looking at poverty, it really, it really was an issue of not, not having, and, having. And, now and now it's a case of excess in terms of those with privilege and those with, and those with power. power. And, those with and, power. And, and I think for and me now, what I'm really trying to understand is how can we ensure that there's meaningful accountability, particularly because in the spirit of leaving no one behind, you don't find human rights discourse really expanding with regards to policy making. And I think what is really unique is the fact that there are a lot of people who are having discussions, who are particularly having discussions, in courts, particularly within the courts, context of socioeconomic context rights, of socioeconomic that are actually rights, trying to define what poverty is, and they're actually trying to actually quantify what, what it looks like within the context of their jurisdictions, of their jurisdictions. Um, noting South African um, courts, and, South African and also in aspirations of progressive realization of democratic aspirations. And looking in the context of one among country, you know, there's a lack of, for instance, lack of submissions of voluntary national reports, not submitting Beijing plus 20 reviews and in reality they're submitting you know reports to treaty bodies such as the African Commission and the Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women and in all these instances there's a lot of this data and the reality is that they know of the problems and the challenges but for some reason it seems like we're always looking for low-hanging fruit and for me I'm really trying to understand how can we build a future fit multi-stakeholder open participatory form of governance that is accountable and also inclusive of both human rights discourse and development work, because I don't think poverty is just a development issue. Okay, okay <laughs> let me go to the right. To the right. Um, so in the Mexican case, our, our MPI uh, takes, well, it takes income, but also it takes rights. It's based on rights. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the, logical, the logic is quite, is quite clear. Uh, and therefore, is, it is possible to... It, we are not measuring the full right, but we are measuring the basic right. And that's how we produce the MPI. I have to say as well that we are also uh, trying to get measures of uh, full access to rights as well, in order to have both elements at the same time. The basic element of poverty and also the access to, 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 to rights, because the Mexican Constitution <coughs> basically is about rights, therefore measuring those will be... In Colleagues, uh, thank you for um, being part of this conversation. Thank you also for putting a spotlight, whether it is on human rights or on aging uh, or indeed on some of the questions that arise when we try in an imperfect world of data create a policy relevant tool. Um, the MPI is a journey, um, policy making is a journey, poverty eradication is a journey. Uh, I think the ultimate litmus test always must be um, are we going to eradicate poverty faster as a result of this work or are we just distracting ourselves? Yeah. And I think um, certainly in the, in the years that I have followed this debate and I have been engaged in this interface between analysis, data, research and policy making, I think um, much of what the multidimensional poverty index has brought to this debate is um, in a sense a sophistication that allowed us to escape the very dangerous risk of oversimplification. Um, you know, I alluded to that beginning with its aggregated data. Um, to understand how best we can address poverty, we have to understand the reality of poverty much more clearly. And I think this remains the journey. And I want to um, just use this moment also to remember a moment we first met, Sabina in Oxford, which was actually with um, the late and wonderful Tony Atkinson presenting a review on poverty measurements that uh, I think the bank at the time had commissioned. And, you know, we may sit in this room here and think, um, notwithstanding a particular data disagreement, maybe in a country context, that we are all on the same track. Um, to those of you who assume that, go back and have a look at that report that the World Bank commissioned and that uh, Tony Atkinson uh, was the voice of bringing um, still a lot of methodological and also policy challenges that are associated with it because the story of poverty still remains an uncomfortable one in all our societies. And I emphasize 
all our societies.